Hello and welcome to the Winning Agendas coverage of Twilight Struggle Matches. My name is Jesse Marshall. Uh, here we've got a game in the International Twilight Struggle League against Lorenzo Nicolini. Uh, so an interesting start. Sorry you've missed the headlines here on Turn 1, but I headlined Containment uh, and Lorenzo headlined Arab-Israeli War, which was unsuccessful. And then we had an AR-1 Iran coup uh, using the China card, which is um, somewhat unusual, but in this case has been very effective. Uh, so, rolling a 6, putting Iran to 4. Uh, influence for the Soviets means that it's pretty difficult for us to get back in. So, instead, uh, given we have an ops rich hand here since we're under containment, uh, I'm just going to go into some of the other uh, USA priority areas. Um, since Captured Nazi Scientist is worth 2 VPs, it may be that we don't event it here, which is unusual, but anyway, we'll see how we go. We've got Indo-Pakistani War and Olympic Games. Olympic Games will probably discard to blockade. Um, Indo-Pakistani War will probably hold if they spread into Pakistan. Um, probably don't want to coup around back here and instead want to start spreading into some other priority areas. So, I think... Probably happy to threaten Europe domination and threaten Thailand here. Um, I don't think I'm desperate to spread, although I am opening myself up to getting cleaned out um, of the Middle East, so perhaps I do just want to put the one in Lebanon. Um, if I'm going to take France, because otherwise Suez Crisis is pretty annoying, although... I don't know, if they want to... They've got no presence on this side of the Middle East at the moment. I guess they could nassle later in the turn. Hmm. Yeah, no, actually, I'm pretty happy to just do this, I think. Unfortunately, we're going to have this next game thing flashing up the whole time because the league's going on at the moment. I do have a couple of games. I think one of my other opponents is around at the moment. So if I play my game... My turn in that game, not only are you going to have to watch me play a turn in another game, but uh, I think they're probably pretty likely to keep playing turns. <laughs> so anyway, we'll just, we'll just ignore this flashing button, as annoying as it is, for the, dur the duration of the game. Uh, now, I did have a few people say they didn't like the ambient sounds, um, so I'm just going to turn them down a little more. But I do like having something going on there. Um, and I'm also... Going to go. All right. Hmm. So that was a bit annoying. Um, the Suez crisis that we expected did happen, but as I said, they're not in this half of the Middle East either at the moment. So in any case, uh, I'm just going to keep. Spreading. Um, do we want to degrade DEFCON now before going to Thailand? Probably. Uh, particularly for one influence. Um, do we want to spread any other places in the mid-war regions while well, we have a few extra ops? Hmm. Maybe we want to put one... I mean, if we don't need to use extra ops this AR, then let's just not. Um... So many do we need three? Okay. The problem with playing a three is that we play Indo-Pakistani war. Unless we're happy to discard that later in the turn. But that means that we may force ourselves to hold blockade, which we don't really want to do. So it's just a bit of a sequencing issue here if we use Olympic Games rather than 5 U plan. Like we've in fact got two fours and then this floating around and a two later in the turn. Um, we don't really use the two because it doesn't let us take back France and UK if they have Europe scoring. Um, and we don't want to use the three because the three that we have available is into a Pakistani war, which we want to hold on to. So we are going to use a four. Um, one, two, three. And then, yeah, just what's the next order of priority? Possibly another non battleground in Europe. Um, 
possibly another one in South Korea. I think that's not too bad. And then next AR, depending on what they do, I mean, keeping DEFCON high is also keeping them out of Pakistan somewhat. I mean, given they haven't spread, there is an argument that we should coup back Iran anyway. Okay, like, I mean, I think this is fine. It's allowing us to just keep on repairing. I think we put one in Algeria. If they coup it, it's a two-stability country, so it's going to require a reasonable amount of ops. Um, if they don't coup it, we probably get it. If they do coup it, we get Thailand, and they get maybe, depending on how high ops a card they use, um, some foothold in Algeria. But they've already got that from the De Gaulle influence anyway. So I'm reasonably happy, reasonably happy with that. Okay, so they rolled well. That's okay. Um, but I'm pretty happy to trade Algeria for Thailand at this point. Um. So let's use CNS to take Thailand. And obviously we are going to have to coup as well late in the turn, but we'll do that on our last AR so that they don't get the chance to spread into Pakistan. So it'll be blockade next which will allow us to, uh, what, what shall we do with that influence? Oh, they are giving us no red. Okay. Well, that possibly changes things slightly. They're cooing for us, so that's okay as well. And they're giving us no red. So that, with that in mind, so we don't, the spread in Asia is not so urgent, but I do want to continue this little march. Um, and we'll probably, we may also want to start making our way back across the Mediterranean towards the Middle East, uh, but we can't do everything all at once. So let's just go Laos and Canada. Oh, is that, does that really? No, I think that's not as good because we want to just be getting ourselves access at this point because we've got three um, ops coming next turn anyway. So I think we'll go Greece. And we'll discard the Olympic Games. So we lose the VPs for um, mill ops because we didn't coup this turn. But if we can end the turn with no rad and access to India via Burma, I think that's okay. Losing them having Suez was obviously annoying, um, i.e. this problem. Uh, but that's okay. These things happen. Uh, one, two, three. So we're looking okay here. So they're going to have a coup. The best chance to coup us, well, the only chance to coup us is South Africa at this DEF CON level. Um, no immediately appealing headlines here, particularly with Asia scoring in hand. I mean, they never want a headline Korean War anyway. Um, headlining Europe scoring is just so risky given everything we've just put into Europe in terms of ops effort last turn. And the fact that we know socialist governments is still out there. Um, we could headline Asia scoring, but I do. I think we can get more out of that. Particularly since we've got the China card and we control Korea, the Korean War as well. Uh, so we can't headline you an intervention. It's probably going to have to be Red Scare which is unfortunate given the ops that it leaves us with, um, but it will, we can play the China card this turn. 
Oops, okay. Alright. Let's go with that. Hmm. Unfortunate. But our red scare hopefully makes it a little more difficult for them to control Thailand from underneath us. It may mean that our China card spreading is, is a little less effective than, the, than we otherwise may have liked. But yeah, being able to UN intervention Korean War and still um, get everything done that we need to is good. So it'll be interesting to see if they have US Japan here as well. I mean, yeah, we've got NORAD too, so that's going to give us a free influence to repair, depending on whether they cool or not. Um, if they don't coup, we might hold off a little bit um, on cooing ourselves, but we'll see how we go. Because I think we've got we're in a, a better position to make use of things currently in Asia, but obviously that can change depending on where they place this influence. Um, but having both better access and the China card means I think we're in a good position to make best use of this Asia scoring. Um, and the fact that our position in Europe is also stronger, plus we're not under red scare, means that hopefully we can score both of these for domination this turn. It's the idea. And I don't think there are too many events out there now that this decals gone off that are going to allow them to disrupt that, hopefully, fingers crossed, particularly under red scam. So fair enough, they're taking a bit of time with this. It's a, a big old decision where to decal. Really does change the dynamic of the game quite a bit, um, potentially, where you go here. Um, and especially in terms of depending on what their follow-up play is. You know, decal, obviously one of the best events in the game, and then having the opportunity to decal and then make a follow-up play opens up so many options. But also they have to be mindful of the fact that potentially moving into one stability battlegrounds, if they're not planning to coup, might not be the best idea. They obviously don't know that we have both the scoring cards. So they're using US Japan because they really want Thailand, fair enough. But I think we're just pretty happy to flip it back at this point. You know, the other options are, you know, take South Korea, move into India whatever else, but yeah, I just don't think we want to do that. We're pretty happy to just take India since we know IP was out of the way. We've got all these non-battlegrounds that they're not going to be able to do anything about. We can just shore up. Um, yeah. It, the, yeah, the, the question basically is, do we want to get ourselves further ahead? Do we have enough ops in the rest of our hand to make the spreads in Asia that we want to? Probably, I think, um, if if we make this play. Uh, or are we better off spreading, putting pressure, saying we're going to take both India and Pakistan if you don't do something about it this turn? Maybe we are better off doing that. It, it requires us to hold the China card um, to do something like this. But, like, it still doesn't really put us in a better position, I don't think. Uh, maybe it does. I think it does, actually, because it, it means we get the best access to both India and Pakistan. Um, hmm.
So we can afford to do it the other way. We don't want to tell them we've got Korean War, I don't think. Oh, maybe we don't care about that. Maybe we just do it this way. Ah, oh, no, we don't want to give them that up. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want really to give them Comic Con until Europe scored. We don't want to give them the tempo break. Yeah, no, I think this is the best way to do it. Because it also threatens domination on the next AR. Without too much fiddling around. Maybe they're going to Pakistan, then we take India, then we take South Korea, then we mop up. The rest of the non-battlegrounds, I think it's okay. The subsidiary question is, how greedy do we get on Korean War? Wowzers, okay. That is super unfortunate. But we do obviously get our free influence. <clears throat> so we don't have great access across the rest of the world, obviously, at this point. But we've focused our attention in two regions and done reasonably well um, at maintaining access. Relying on our mid-war cards to get us back into these other three regions. I think that's okay. Like, if you had to choose, as the US, a way to exit the early war, I think being in control of the two of Asia and Europe, which are the two most difficult to upset regions, is probably where you'd rather be. Um... So for this, I think I'll take South Korea because I think I'm just happy to score Asia on that for six VPs. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm too greedy for anything more at this point. But I will still shore up the rest of the non-battlegrounds in Asia over the rest of the turn and you know, moving to India and Pakistan as well. But I just don't want to be caught out missing out on VPs like by not having enough non battlegrounds or something like that just because of sequencing and the fact that we've got two scoring cards to play. And I don't want to also, you know, for instance, them break control in France or something and us miss out on domination. Not that that's particularly likely since both the France attack cards are out of the deck and they're under red scare. But I, yeah, I just don't really think it's worth it gambling on sequencing. Um, given what's to come. Uh, it may be that since we played China card, we actually hold Korean War and UN Intervention. And just play the others. Um, might play NASA last AR and then... No, that's not great. I think we'll, we might actually try and get back into the Middle East the old Emmanuel way. Okay, so they're going for domination, fair enough. I think we'll just score Europe, get that out of the way. So pretty good for us that, you know, both our regions came out um, in the early war. Meaning that they will get scored again in the mid-war. Um, so the priorities here are get one into Turkey, start moving into India, and then shore up Pakistan and... Burma before the end of the turn. Possibly even get the extra VP from Afghanistan if we have the ops, but it's unlikely we're going to be able to do that in addition to getting into the Middle East. Oh, this is good, I think. No, it's not, because they have shored that up. Okay. They saw that coming, and that's going to make it a little more difficult for us to get into the Middle East, but hopefully Middle East scoring doesn't come out before um, we have a chance to get one of our Middle East access cards and get in there. Uh, cool. So let's go Comic Con.
We could even hold Korean War UN intervention NASA, potentially, if we don't want to give them access to this part of the Middle East, which actually at this point is pretty bad for us. Because, you know, it's bad enough absorbing a domination without presence. You know, we really do want to try and get presence there. Um, but having to absorb control would be very, very difficult. So there's that not playing captured Nazi scientist coming back a little bit to bite us. Um, but that's okay. Not the end of the world. Uh... Huh, not the end of the world, I guess, in a game like this, that's not really something to be said lightly. Um, yeah, if we want Pakistan, we want India as well, just in case IP war comes out, because having India obviously makes that less likely to go off. So I think pretty much the only good early war event that we have, I mean, we haven't had NATO could still come now that Marshall Plan's done, but we haven't got Formosan, but we've got um, NORAD and Red Scare and Marshall Plan and US Japan. That's pretty good in terms of things for our opponents to give us without having lost anything. It doesn't get much better than that, I don't think, as the US in the early war. Uh, okay, so they've blocked off Afghanistan a little. And I think I do want a UN intervention, NASA. Uh, and possibly take Malaysia to shore up that Southeast Asia scoring um, and give us the Thailand adjacency for brush war. I think I'm. Uh, no, we'll overprotect Pakistan or Thailand. Uh, I think we'll overprotect Thailand. Yeah, it's better. Given that we've given our opponent the China card. Okay, very unfortunate. Um, but we can use CIA created to coup Lebanon, which might be the best thing to do here. Weird, but. I think most likely to defray loss of victory points given that we have to score the Middle East this time. Hmm. Um, right. Interesting. So, I'm going to coup Lebanon. And they may well coup us back here, but given that they are both under Vietnam and have higher uh, ops than us, and some pretty good cards, um, it wouldn't be the worst outcome for that to happen. Let's see where they go. Yep, they do coup us back. And then we will indeed coup them back. Uh, but how will we do it? Um, we don't really want to do it with socialist governments. Um... So we're four plus with AI war, or we're four plus if we coup Syria with a coup op card as well to get an influence in. Um, the other opportunity is to put influence in Algeria and try and work our way around to Libya, which is also possible. Um, or to just jam influence into Iran, but that also takes 
some effort to get anywhere where we can control a country. Um, what's likely to be higher value for us at this point? Perhaps cooing Algeria and... So they can't actually degrade DEFCON at the moment. Um, so we kind of get to control where that happens. And that's not the case if we move into Iran, but it does mean that we can just keep cooing Lebanon and get in there. So I think let's do that. So do we want to event Olympic Games at some point, maybe? Okay. So they chose to do that. I mean, yeah, the other option, obviously, that I was considering, but maybe didn't say, was to coup Algeria and put the influence in Pakistan, but this is okay. So we can coup now Lebanon again. That's a little better. And now they've got one turn to punt us out. Before we can spread into Jordan as well. Um, or rather, coup somewhere. Probably Al Angola at this point. So we'll see, they may want to try and restore their domination by placing in Syria, Iraq, etc. Well, we shall see. And they're going to try and queue us out again. And they do. Alright. So I guess we have to go again. Let's see if they ever run out of appetite for cooing Lebanon. We certainly haven't yet. The challenge of the 20th century is the challenge of human relations and not of impersonal natural forces. Yep, so they're just choosing to accept our presence, which is nice. Um, so I think we can just degrade DEFCON now. We might give them an extra VP by doing that, um, but we also can break Pakistan, which is not bad. So let's just do that. Uh, we'll take Angola. I mean, we could have potentially held off and done that AR7, but that would give them time to spread to Zaya, which I wasn't super keen on. No, AR6, I should say. So we can be at least scoring and potentially either space or play one of these. Socialist governments might not be too much of an issue, given that we have Marshall Plan. Uh, let's get rid of you. So we know they've got what, a special relationship in NATO left. Oh, they've played NATO. So they have a special relationship and... Five-year plan? And D-style? Let's see. Yeah, 
Special relationship, five year plan, and D style. <sighs> so interesting. Alright, well, we should, that means that we should fill up Zaya. Uh, but we don't need to do it right now. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to D style. Yeah, we don't. to take Zaya anyway, let's just do that. <laughs> Probably want to take Malaysia just to give ourselves that tiny bit more protection from Brush War, because if they Brush War us here, it's going to be really annoying. I mean, it's going to be annoying anyway. But I think that Lao is going to be our next NORAD candidate for that reason. Most likely. So next day, uh, we'll probably just punt this Korean War. Uh, but we might also play Socialist Governments. Yeah, so they did take Zay, but uh, like I think as as far as D-Style goes, that's actually not too bad a result. Only having two in South America. Um, and yeah, Indonesia I just don't think is a should be a priority at that point for them. Uh, I think we'll space Korean War. We don't can't really get much impetus here. I don't think out of having an AR instead. So socialist governments. So we'll just do that because socialist governments is a little better for us than um, Korean War is given the state of our hand. Okay, so ABM Treaty is going to give us a decent shot in um, South America. And in addition to that, we've got Colonial Rear Guards, which is brilliant. And we've got Isuri River, Isuri River Skirmish, which would not be a bad headline either. Um, I like Colonial Rear Guards because it gives us Malaysia Challenge, Lao, and... Attack them in Africa, um, getting one into Algeria is also nice when we've got no red active, but we have a lot of options here. So I just want to think about them a little more carefully. What could we do with Syria? We could attack North Korea and... La take Lao, which again, like I think protecting this Thailand is actually really important here. Um, the Colonial Rigas does accomplish some of that anyway. Um, yeah, I think I like Usuri a bit because it causes them the problem in North Korea. but Colonial Rear Guards gives us the Africa fight as well. So I think it's probably that on balance. Okay, so we're going to have to deal with this Central America problem at some point. But let's go with one, two... And yeah, like I said, just the more countries that we get influence into jointly, the better with no red up. I mean, there's no guarantee as to how long no red's going to last in the mid-war, obviously, with Quagmire out there, but we're going to get at least two goes at it this turn, given we've got ABM Treaty. Assuming they don't Quagmire AR1. Um... And this is going to be... I'm really anxious about this Thailand protection that happening. Formosan is another reason to uh, obviously take Taiwan here in addition to later on protecting ourselves from them. What your country can do for you, 
Karen Wool. Okay, so pretty keen to protect there, but I'm also pretty happy with that. Um, what's our priority here? So we want to coup Venezuela, and I think I want to do that now, um, which will allow us to take another one of these battlegrounds. I just really don't want to lose Thailand to Brush War, and I'm getting way too anxious about that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this, I think. Not the end of the world. Um, ah, there I go, seeing it again. Let's take one of these now. In the conditions of the immense majority of the countries of America Latina, no hay otro camino que la lucha armada. Y esa parece ser la situación también en muchos otros países de Asia y de Asia. And, yeah, you know, a few threes that are obviously good for us to use. I don't think we want to ask not this turn. We may want to Suri on AR7, though, to get our way into North Korea and just keep annoying them with more options for NORAD. Uh, going North Korea and Pakistan on AR7 could be quite good, considering we do hold the China card. So let's go one. Two, three. We'll make our way around to Uruguay as well. Um I don't think we can get heaps of value. Increasing DEFCON. Oh, we do need to obviously be mindful of this Central America issue as well at some point. So, might want to just randomly try and reline Cuba and Mexico later in this turn. Because I don't really want to leave that sitting. I mean, you know, I'm assuming they don't have the scoring card right now, otherwise, they almost certainly would have played it. We actually know that they've, I think, still got five year plan and special relationship in hand, because I don't think they managed to ditch either of them. Yeah, they destyled last AR. So they held over five year plan and special relationship, which is interesting. Um so how are we looking here? I think having this AR7 is nice. Um we can socialist governments probably next AR and then put the influence into Uruguay. We can use How I Learned to realign sometime later in the turn, potentially Ask Not as well. South African Unrest, I'll probably space, like I, I'm pretty happy holding them at bay at Angola at the moment. And threatening to flip these guys. Okay, so you and Interventioning Special Relationship. I mean, that's always good as the US when... I have to do that. Um, so maybe they're concerned about Southeast Asia scoring, because that's an interesting priority for influence. But I think let's just trigger this now. Get that done. And in terms of country count in Asia, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are ahead, which is good. And I think we know that we've got this to cause problems in Asia later in the turn, so we don't really need to worry about trying to force Taiwan or fight over the Philippines. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll go into France and then return to Uruguay. To set up the domination. Forcing them to commit the ops to taking Chile is always nice as well, given that they have Allende and they're wasting ops in a sense by doing that. Uh, at some point I do want to overprotect France just because I don't want them to be able to deprive us of the Europe domination very easily. I also want to take Spain. Oh, we've got NATO, so we don't need to worry about that because Italy's not going to get brush ward. Nice little out of benefit of NATO there. Of might, but the vindication of right. We might say it's the main benefit. The expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom. Cool. So that gives us a bit of tempo and a bit of breathing space. And I think we might use that to be a bit more aggressive with... I mean, now that OPEC's gone and Middle East scoring's gone, we may be a little less concerned about NASA. In fact, we may want to trigger NASA this turn just so that it's out of the way before Sadat comes. Um, but I do think I want to put two in... We'll put one in Argentina. Maybe we want to put two in Argentina, actually. Given that they appear to be struggling a little for ops. Again, we do want to be mindful of this issue. Over here. And make sure that we do put something to it at some point in the turn. Okay, cool. Wow. We get Argentina. It may be a one op rear line in AR6. But anyway, let's do this. Having this whole chain makes it a lot harder for them to disrupt you with something like a brush war. I mean, brush warring Venezuela is always good, but um, yeah, now that we've. Th there's no easy and obvious place for them to coup and get an, a good realign. And if we can get one into Chile, then we can threaten to realign them out by also moving into Peru. Possibly as well. But that's going to be for a later turn, because this turn we're going to be going NASA then Usuri. So you never know, we might get lucky on our rear lines here. Get them out of Cuba or Mexico. And when I say rear lines, I mean rear line. But anyway, we know that they've got five-year plan. And one other card. So, I mean, obviously they're trying to hold five-year plan to discard good scoring cards for us, but it does get a bit awkward sometimes. Okay, damn it. It's unfortunate. There go six VPs. So good on them for holding the old five-year plan. Um, but now we get two ARs, which we should then think about a little more. So because they've got an empty AR, we could Usuri and take North Korea, but I mean, that's less attractive now that Asia scoring's out of the way. Um, so maybe we ditch this Usuri plan altogether. Feels so bad. We've had, we could almost the control Asia to the Earth. in between these ARs. Um, I do think we have to do something about this Central America problem. But realigning when we have mm, a whole lot of free time feels bad when we could be creating more problems for them. But what's the biggest problem we can create? Uh, like we can only really flip one of the African battlegrounds. We can, if we had How I Learned still in hand, then we might be able to threaten a few more issues. But yeah, I mean, this is obviously the most powerful card in our hand and they've just scored that region. So I'm not feeling super enthused about our capacity to do heaps. Let's just try 
um, doing it this way. Because if we can get a good realign here, it takes some of the pressure off. Yeah. So we're just going to do the old three influence from Missouri to realign, I think. Okay, it was always a risk, uh, but one that we hoped would not eventuate. Okay, so we don't want to degrade DEFCON in the headline phase. Um, so we don't want to play Duck and Cover. Uh, we don't really want to play Nixon for the VPs. We probably want to use one small step as an event, but later in the turn. Um, Maybe we just headline Allende or Romanian abdication here. And I think the answer is Allende, since it's pretty irrelevant. Hmm, which is annoying because we do miss out on Narad this turn. This will be interesting. I'm assuming it'll be Venezuela, but I mean, it could just as well be Argentina as well. <clears throat> Brazil would be interesting. I mean, they could place in Brazil and then coup Venezuela or Argentina, but that's a bit lower percentage. Given that they're then at a dis like not as much of a an advantage in the country that they're cooing. Let me go think about it. Uh, Hunter would have been nice for us. Actually, we don't. That's okay. Can't have everything. instead, fair enough. Interesting. Just because now we get no red, but I guess it means they get two coups. Well, I mean, to attack two battlegrounds, so it makes some sense, but yeah, I'm just not sure. Relining at even. Anyway, um, they've got Shea, okay. Oh, they're not using Shea, though. they're using to coup us. Okay. Uh, well, yes, I think I'll just attack Zaire, probably. Well, maybe Nigeria. Do you want to try to disrupt this control a little? Uh, but do can we set up any more favorable realigns? Yeah, we probably can actually. Um, so let's do yeah same thing, and we'll go one two. Yeah, we 
do that. Sorry, but we'll also show up for a guy. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and then we'll try and realign Zaya. And hopefully, well, Zaya is the third priority, but we'll try and kick them out of one of these Central American battlegrounds. Because if we can get a good roll just on one roll um, on Mexico or Cuba and kick them out of those, then it's quite hard for them to get back in, and I'm happy for them to have two, but not all three. And then having another place to dump our realigns if we do get a good roll in the first one is good to have. Um, also, want to space South African unrest so that I can one small step at some point in this turn. Having the extra one in West Germany is nice for Lily Brandt to be playable too. Okay, so that works out pretty well for us. I'm happy with that. Now, do we use the space here to... I think maybe we force the issue a little more than just relying on the realigns. Um, and just break Mexico. And then what's the other issue we want to create for them? Or do we want to just try our space gambit? No, no, I think we've got to press the issue a little bit here. force them to have something. And if we end up getting into a coup war in Guatemala, then so be it. Like, we have a pretty low ups hand, all of which are playable, which is kind of the best place to be having coup wars over one battleground. One stability eaten on battlegrounds. Okay, um, well, so much for all of that. Uh, I guess we'll just take Mexico. I mean, we could have taken the China card back there, I suppose, but... With Willy Brandt, maybe that would be... Better to do that with, uh, to take Mexico with Willy Brandt and then take the China card back because that presumably means that they have a, some kind of need to avoid something in their hand. Um, okay, brush warring Mexico. Okay, cool. That was lucky. So now we have the time to try this and it does not come off. Oh, I guess we can't complain about our luck after that failed brush war. I mean, it was only 50% brush war, so. We weren't that lucky to avoid it. Yeah, this was what I feared, actually. Um, so... Now we are in a little more of an, a pickle. We can coo. Um, with... We can coup, we can break Argentina. I think breaking into Argentina actually is still quite good. Let's use Willy Brandt this time. Step. Um, because of the aforementioned NORAD factor, uh, but also potential realigns in Paraguay, I guess. But yeah, just in general, it's giving us it's giving us a uh, domination in a region that we otherwise don't have. Which is, I think, a better use of the two influence than, say, going into South Africa here. But we obviously do want to avoid giving ceding Africa control. Nuclear subs are still out there. Um, public governments are still out there for what it's worth, but that's becoming less and less and less relevant by the action round. Although it will still allow us to kick them out of Cuba if they give it to us, which is nice. 
and there are open Our battlegrounds in the Middle East too that we wouldn't might, mind getting into. But the vindication of right, not peace at the expense of freedom, okay. but both peace and freedom. What's this going? Here in this hemisphere. Okay, so they're going for the control. And we around the world. So I'm willing, pretty happy now to taste that regard and just try and deal with that because we just can't afford to give away control. With South African unrest out of the way as well, um, and Portuguese Empire crumbles removed, we can use the three ops to flip this once we get some more ops, but... Yeah, so... Six is quite a bit, but not as much as it could have been. Uh, and let's break control on AR7 here. Okay, so we'd have to be a bit careful of our VP count. A little annoying timing on the nuclear subs. Could have been, could have been better, but that's okay. We won't complain. Uh, what can we get back with salt? We've got all the power cards. Um, VOA, ask not. Interesting. Heaps and heaps and heaps of options in this hand. So there's a few VPs available for us in the hand if we want them. Um, got a lot of coups available if we want them. There's one problem to deal with. And there's a general somewhat paucity of ops, particularly if we want to try and event these neutral events, which means that we're probably not going to get a chance to event them. Um, Maybe we punt Central America scoring in the headline phase. Um, the other option is to nuclear subs, but I'm pretty happy actually, I think, to nuclear subs in an action round. I don't think Central America is going to get heaps better with this hand. Um, I think we just want to get it out of the way. Okay, so they get Southeast Asia, Cambridge 5. Hopefully they've got Europe scoring this turn, and or South America. I do want to try and drag this VP count back a little bit by the end of the turn. I'll probably event Camp David, almost certainly. And given our lack of access in the Middle East and the VP and that Sadat's coming, so... Having the combo of the two is always nice to just straight up control Egypt. And yeah, I do think nuclear subs in this turn is quite good, um, given all of the one step battlegrounds in Africa that are up for grabs with our one ops coup cards. And we can thankfully get rid of this decolonization. Our opponent is thinking long and hard about their AR1, I assume. Although we are behind on the clock, so we can't really talk about thinking long and hard. Interesting. That could be annoying. Very annoying. Okay. Um, so, coup. When do we want to coup? Uh, probably Argentina at this point. Okay. 
then do we want to shore up Southeast Asian position now? No, I don't think so. Even though we're probably going to nuclear subs, I think it's just better to aim for battlegrounds. Um, the other option is we can try and flip Pakistan with the China card uh, by putting one in there, but mm, I don't love that. En las condiciones de la inmensa mayoría de los fetish. países de América Latina, no hay otro camino que la lucha armada. Y esa parece ser la situación también en muchos otros países de Asia y de so we can spend three ups for two VPs by retaking these um, Southeast Asian countries, which also gives us countries, or we can spend these three ups for three VPs right now just by venting arms race. I think I'd probably take the countries because that also assists us, obviously, with country count in Asia for the purposes of domination should things go terribly. And it also still allows us to dominate um, if we put the three influence into Taiwan, which is not too much to ask at some point later on. So assuming that they don't go and repair these, I think that'll probably be the next play. Um, and we may even hold on to nuclear subs for next turn, depending on how the rest of the ARs shake out, just because we're going to be doing you know, this, this, space this, um, this for an event. We may then just like you know play one of these for some other reason and try and hold us to nuclear subs I mean the other thing is we could ignore these completely and just punt the Southeast Asia scoring for two but and so my fellow Americans I don't really love ignoring Asia, I don't think, do since the like next priority would be to, uh, as in, well, the next most advantageous play in terms of using the cards in our hands most efficiently would be to nuclear subs and then coup these African battlegrounds, and since Africa's also been scored already, if both scoring cards are going to come back next turn, I think I'd rather be in a better, better position in Asia than in Africa while it's open because it's easier to impact Africa more quickly later than it is to impact Asia once those countries are tied up. Um, anyway, let's see how we go. I think that's a higher priority, you know, sorting out this Asian issue than this Camp David Accords, which could do at any point in the turn. Okay, it's a bit annoying, um, but in some ways probably makes things a little easier for us because we can just put one with Summit into Burma. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I was like, hang on, there's not 16 countries in Asia. Um, so if we put the one in Burma and then end up controlling Taiwan, then we can still dominate Asia. Okay. But that's not a huge priority. Maybe we do score Southeast Asia for the two points here. Just get that out of the way. Um, move on to showing up Burma and Taiwan when we have a few more ops spare. And at this point, arms race for the VPs is actually looking reasonably appealing. Just to try and drag that VP camp back a, a tad. Damn it, it's annoying. Um, just makes it all the more painful that our little gambit a few turns ago didn't work out. Um, yeah, so let's do this.
means at least we're threatening some battlegrounds now as well. In the Middle East. Um, it may well be that we still event nuclear subs later in the turn. Like we could still go arms race, like hold decal, arms race, nuclear subs, and then coup with these two. I don't, I don't actually hate that. Obviously we'll see what our opponent does. Hopefully, Europe's scoring or South America's scoring come out this turn. we are really annoyed if they don't. Achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. That um, Asia scoring five-year plan turned out to be really, really annoying. So I think we'll event this now. It gives us another opportunity for a coup if we really want to. Uh, with the arms race, like it just lets us make that call rather than make call the late later rather than having to decide now because we might end up deciding that Kui Algeria, for example, is more worthwhile than taking the arms race VPs. But I, yeah, it may not be the case. We'll see. Or cooing another one of these one stability battlegrounds, depending on how our other coups go. Yeah, the space race fails have been pretty unfortunate for us because it is always nice to move into the late war as the US having a bit more space race action. Very interesting question for us here about this arms race, depending on what their last play is. What do we do? Columbia is a possible. I think probably Haiti or Nicaragua is still right there, even if we don't do both. Um, and Saudi Arabia is good. So I think we have to go Saudi Arabia. Um, And, yeah, let's go Haiti. and then I think we probably take the three VPs. Oh, it's really tough because this is also really nice. Oh, wrong way around. <laughs> I did that all wrong. Um, yeah, I think it's probably that. Okay. 
this hand I like for all sorts of reasons. Um, and I probably am going to bear trap in the headline. Um, Because we do want to make use of the no rad, so we want to coup AR1. How many is that? Three. Okay, we'll deal with that. Alright. So now I think we'll use grain sales. I like it. And we'll coo. Where will we coo? I think Algeria is okay. Um, I mean, we can just blow them out of the water in one of the one stab battlegrounds, which is also okay. Or we can deprive them of Middle East Dom, but we can do that on our next AR, assuming they don't score it. Mm. Yeah, it's Libya or Algeria. Intending towards Libya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so let us do, I think Zaire again. Yeah, I mean, they, they've they chose to let us keep having the Quagmire every turn. Uh, let us keep having Nerd every turn by not eventing the Quagmire last turn, so I'm pretty okay with that. We'll probably cash in Special Relationship for the... VPs. See how things go though. Might try and have a sneaky reline on Cuba at some point. We'll see how we go. I mean, obviously getting the flower power out of the hand there was nice for the grand sales, so it was a good hit. Okay, so showing up their position there, we'll just cash this in for the moment. Um, they're going to try and realign us out of South Africa, but like whatever, we can move back in if they are successful. Um, the only other thing we could have done there was flip Angola. But yeah, I'm just not super keen on that. So, I guess the thing here is we can use Red Scare to take South Africa and break Angola, but it doesn't really get us all that far. 
we can, I think, better is to do it like this. Probably. I think so. Because at least demand, it demands a higher ops response from them in either of these countries. I mean, they can realign Angola, but I think realigning any country where you're where you have influence is risky. Okay, perhaps not. But in any case, that turned out quite well for us. The lack of ops in our hand does make this a little awkward, because like we don't even have a two ops other than special relationship to take these two back, but whatever. So we'll give up on our two VPs from special relationship to Shore up this Southern African position. And now a cheeky uh, realign on Cuba would not be too bad. Probably still want to event PCR, like I think it's um, you know, still better than a random one off somewhere. Even though it's not making a huge difference to any of the countries that it affects. Wow, that's uh, a little annoying. Let's get rid of that. And that. Um, and do we want to get rid of Brush War? It's pretty good for us on Panama. It's pretty annoying for us if it hits Thailand. I think we do want to get rid of it. Um, and this is a real pain in the ass now. That rail line was just so rude. At plus zero to kick us out. <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating. All right, what are we going to do? Um... We need to make a problem somewhere, which is a little challenging given the ops in our hand. Mm. We're probably going to have to play the China card. Oh, that really sucks. I really don't want to do that. Oh, shit. Um... I'm just gonna have to space this because I'm gonna have to do it at some point. Uh, more found spaces. Okay. I'm now officially nervous about this African situation. I do not like it at all. I believe that this nation should. Well, I mean, I guess that gives us something to do with all our one ops cards. Do we go into Peru and go for the reline? Hmm. Very interesting. I think we probably do. Because going to Nicaragua is just so much worse when they can just curse straight up. With the OAS. Um, 
Oh, well, <laughs> I guess I can go straight out of Peru anyway. Uh, okay, so we'll just play PCR, I think. Yeah, I can't really think of too many better places for one influence right now. I mean, I probably can, actually, but I think the effect is still decent. Yeah. Okay. So, neat hand. Um, Awox out to Saudis is nice. Chernobyl's nice, but maybe we want to hold that for the following turn. Glasnost and ABM Treaty is going to get us a lot of NORAD action this turn. Um, pretty happy to headline AWOX out to Saudis, I think. Dealing with Muslim Revolution and giving us a battleground is just about like as good as that card gets. Um, when I say dealing with Muslim Re Revolution, obviously it always deals with Muslim Revolution, but in a situation where it would be really annoying for us if Muslim Revolution got played. Um, and conversely, now them not having any efficient ways to attack us in the Middle East in this section is actually excellent. Other than Marine Barracks bombing, obviously, but that's, I think, a little less effective. <laughs> Okay, so we lost that Peru foothold. So we may want to think about trying to improve our Asian position, but I think really, if we can improve the African position this turn, it really makes it quite difficult for our opponent to win. We do want to be obviously careful of war games given the score, so perhaps last nosting later in the turn rather than earlier is better because we have no real sources of VPs in our hand. And we do have two unplayables as well. Glasnost, the problem with holding on to it later, I guess, is that we don't want them to randomly reform us in an AR and then make Glasnost into an unplayable. But anyway, we'll see. I think they probably would have headlined the reformer rather than South African unrest if they had it. Although they are pretty obsessed with Africa. Okay. Let's do Nigeria. Um, and then do we ABM Treaty. I think we just want to consolidate for a moment. Holding that. So let's go one. can coup them. If they try and realign and fail, which would be lovely, then we can coup them out of Angola and that'll be sweet. But if they successfully realign us out of South Africa, then that's a bit annoying the totalitarian in terms of us trying to get back into this area. Because it does such so we may instead spirit, ABM the, the um, impulse to create, to enjoy, to worship. Okay. 
So lucky that we Muslim Revolution. Uh, uh, lucky that we have uh, our Saudis rather. I think. The totalitarian world produces backwardness because it does such violence to the spirit. Cool. Thwarting the human impulse to create. Well, that's good. I think we will ABM treaty. Uh, maybe we don't even need to. Maybe we can just coup Cameroon and then maybe ABM Zaya rather than doing Algeria. But yeah, there is an argument to be made for. We are going to get another NORAD. Okay, we're going to have to hurry this up anyway. So, Coup. Algeria. It's unfortunate. Okay, so we've only got nine minutes left, so we're going to have to really speed this up now. Yep. I'm going to talk a little bit less. Today, today I say, as long as this gate is closed, as long as this scar of a wall is permitted to stand, it is not Alright, well that was good. I finally got our VP from the space race. Um, and I think you know, every P VP is relevant now around um, war games. Uh, probably could have held off a little on that and gone into Jordan for country count just to deprive them of this if they are holding it. Uh, so that was probably a little hasty. Yes, I think rolling one on both of the coups this turn was slightly unfortunate because Algeria and Libya are both, would have been very helpful countries to get. Um, I'm not really sure about what's going on there. I suppose we'll find out. Holding Chernobyl here is going to be nice if we can do it. I mean, it's always risky to let Korean War trigger even on a six. It's going to be such a blowout. Maybe we just don't want to take that one in six chance. But then again, having Chernobyl next turn, we can... Yeah, it's not good enough. Um, anyway, let's do... Oh, do we want to trigger this Korean War? Yeah, I'm going to take the one in six pawn. Come on. Good. Um, oh, two VPs. Yuck. No, no, no. Oh, no. I didn't even realize. Flower Power, please don't kill us with war games. I'm going to be so sad if that happens far out. This is terrible. What have I done? What have I done? Oh, God. Please no. That'll be so depressing. <laughs> I 
copiar, I'm so nervous. Cool. So we'll take Soviets, shoot down KL007, even though it means we don't get our NORAD, um, just because it means that we can flip the Middle East, hopefully and then score Asia, Europe, and Middle East for domination, which will be very nice. And we may even end up holding this again. Uh, we may... Yep, we'll see how we go. Let's see what shakes out here. In terms of their headline. They could obviously still have marine barracks bombing, which would be a little on the annoying side. We've also got the capacity to head to advanced shuttle diplomacy if we really want to. So Pershing is going to be a bit annoying here. Um, we don't really want to give up France. Um, we can always event Chernobyl on Europe just to play defensively if they start to try and jam us in France. The other option is to, yeah, just do this. Try and deprive us of non battlegrounds. They can't do that very well. One, two, three, four. They can take us down to four countries. So we'll just take put one extra in Canada. Um, and one in Israel for the BP. careful of our time now. We can realign Algeria too, can't forget that here. Fingers crossed. Okay, doesn't look like war games. That is annoying. That is certifiably annoying. have been worse.
assuming that we can keep enough time for the last turn, I think we're in reasonable shape. Out of that war games range as quickly as possible. Despite the fact that obviously they would have played it if they had it, nonetheless. It just makes me a lot less nervous. Um so we'll space around Iraq War. Um Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down probably coup war. Nicaragua, or coup Haiti, I should say, with um, the summit, although we may coup Cameroon. I'll have to think about that. I think Haiti's probably worth, probably going to be more likely to have an impact. In terms of country count and um, potential realignments on Cuba. Remembering also that on our final AR, we can always break control of Cuba if they don't ever protect, but there's no guarantee they won't. So the fact that they um, pushed pretty early with that Usuri, I mean, it doesn't necessarily telegraph much in terms of spacing early in the turn, but it's kind of an interesting follow-up to the Marine Barracks bombing, which was quite an aggressive play to then Usuri. kind of indicates that maybe their hand is not amazing, but... Um, ABM I don't love seeing them have, but then again, now we get to have a coup, I guess. Yeah, another one. Sad times. But it does sandbag a couple of VPs for us. We could have played Middle East scoring there. I mean, there was a chance that they, they kind of know that we've got it. They're going to coup Egypt or something. But really. Losing the Chernobyl is a bit annoying. But I think slowly improving our position in the two places where they're ahead, or significantly improving our position, I should say, in the two places where they're ahead is, is okay if we were going to lose it. Now we've just got to hope that this ABM coup on Egypt presumably is not successful, um, but they may also coup Mexico, I suppose, given the priority that they seem to have placed on it so far. So we should have about four minutes to do our last turn, which is not too bad. Okay, flipping Zaya I can cope with. So they're going to ABM now and give us no rad, I wonder. We might hold on to it for turn 10. No, they are going to do it now. To give us the no rad. I think we'll use to break desire again. 
Um, do we want to give him a TVP? It's from Iraq War, probably yes. To do this. Uh, so Voice of America is nice, but maybe we want to hold it for later in the turn. I think we'll just headline Hunter. So one death con suicide card, but this uh, liberation theology we want to hold if possible. It's probably not possible though, so we're probably going to have to space it. Your own contra scandal, we can just play sixth. I mean, <sighs> yeah, holding summit into ten, ten that was a bit unfortunate, but it's okay. All right, so we go first anyway, which is cool. So we'll do this one. The totalitarian world produces backwardness and because it does such violence mark. to the spirit, thwarting the human impulse to create, to enjoy, to worship. that pretty well. Yeah, I think as long as we can stay on top of time here with VOA we should be fine. The totalitarian world produces backwardness because it does such I feel like we're getting a lot of uh, repeated sound effects, aren't we? To create, to enjoy, to worship. Mm, that's annoying. Better than losing the game. Still annoying. Uh, Alright. Let's start killing some relevant things, shall we? Nope. Oh, Latin American Death Squads. Rip. Forget about that. Gotta use your brain. Okay, so Yeah, we want to be reasonably aggressive this turn because that's what's going to make VOA the best. Like, if we can flip two or even three regions with it, it's incredible. Can we Uruguay, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's just trigger this. We'll just take Paraguay. Oh, that sucks. Um, yeah. So we can you know, intervention the liberation theology to give ourselves the full quota of action rounds this time. And yeah, like I said, I think going last with VOA should probably get us there. But we do want to keep at least sort of 20 or 30 seconds to be making those decisions. Uh, so next priority is going to be flipping Zaire, I think. We'll just use one of the, use our five-year plan to do that if we can. Oh, no, we'll just coup there. Um, with solidarity, I think. Oh my god, how many ones can we roll in coups? 
Oh, I mean, I know it was under Latin American death squads, but still. That is annoying. Okay. So I'm just going to flip this now. This is too busy, actually. I mean, yes, it's annoying that they can potentially railline us out of Argentina, but we still have domination, so what we can accomplish with the VOA is just going to hopefully go over the top of them, since we can also deprive them of um, both of their battlegrounds in Central America at the moment, if they choose to realign here. Yeah, we can pretty much wipe them out. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down okay. this wall. Get to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed the match. Uh, thank you for watching. It got down to pretty close in terms of time, but um, I think having that VOA spirit. on AR7 turn 10 is always nice. To create yeah, being able to flip to enjoy the two regions where they're ahead, as well as holding our lead in Europe and Asia across the course of the game, um, helped us to get there. Um, yeah, them never really being able to challenge us. I mean, we put a lot of effort into in the early war using all of our advantages to, to take those two continents and across the course of the game holding them ended up paying off for us which was good there are a couple of dicey moments there where we went into war games range um but i think in general we probably had some pretty rough beats in terms of rolling ones and stuff on coups they missed a reasonably important brush war um but yeah i think we managed to stay in control of that game most of the way along. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and we'll be back with more games next time.